coming up, it's Nickelodeon Wienerville, followed by Gumby. This local cola is so good. It's so good, I think I'll have another one. Oh, Zip, bring me another can of that delicious soda. Um, Daddy, there's only one can left in. I kind of thought I'd drink it, seeing as you drank the other 49 cans. I see your point, but there's only one problem. What's that, Daddy? I want that can. Sorry, it's mine. Oh, yeah? You give me that can. I'm going to get that soda from you, and it's the last thing I do. Let me have that soda, you little wise guy. Give me that soda. Daddy, stop shaking. Daddy, it's going to explode. Today's show, we'll be looking at how some people just don't know when to say when, be it video games, shopping, whatever. Sometimes people just don't know when to stop, and this can get you into a lot of trouble at traffic lights. <laughs> Hello! Hey, Zip, where are you going with the cola? I'm taking it to Daddy! Mark, she's gone crazy over this cola! I think she's falling in love with it! What, what makes you say that? Has anyone ever told you you have an effervescent personality? <laughs> If Daddy drinks any more of that soda, she's gonna have more gas than if she ate your chili. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you have more bubbles in your brain than there are in that soda can, I'll tell you that. Do not. Do, do. Do not do. Do, 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 do. Do not do that. Do, 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 do. It's a wonder car, and Batman has his radar, supersonic sonar. A missile that can find him, he will never feel. His wings are his protection, like a shield of steel. It's that thing. As an innocent-looking circus wagon rolls into town, it carries not a circus, but those two cunning carnival crooks, the Ring-a-Ding Brothers. We're not called the Ring-a-Ding Brothers for nothing. Look at this ring, a four-carat ruby. And look at this one, a five-carat diamond. Let's try this place. <laughs> Ding ding. The hotline. Batfink here. Batfink, Jewel Thieves just hit town, and I think they're the Ring a Ding Brothers. Why do you say that, Chief? Because one of them must have used a trapeze to swing to a tree, then into an open window and out again. Brilliant deduction, Chief. Well, I haven't spent 20 years on the force for nothing. And besides, the butler saw the whole thing. Karate, the battle act. My guess is they're heading out of town. We'll cut them off at the bridge. Here comes their wagon. And we'll fix their wagon. They're not stopping. We almost had to fix the battle act. They're 
here's their wagon. But where are they? I found one of them. Help! Bud Fink! I'll save you, Karate. I'm all right, Bud Fink. Are you all right? Yes, luckily I landed on my wings. So did an elephant. I'll help you, Bat Fink, as soon as I finish bouncing. I think I just finished. That hook saved my neck. But what's going to save my feet? Bat Fink, when I command the elephant to sit, you will be a flat bat. And when I drop this hook, you'll be a clawed karate. Ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven... Bat Fink and Karate seem destined for a five, dreadful doom. What four, can I say except three, goodbye? Two, one, zero. Here's the stolen jewelry, Chief. Three valuable rings. You know what would have happened if we didn't catch them? What? They would have had a three-ring circus. someone to help join me crew. Are there any volunteers out there? I need somebody. Hey, you sir with the red shirt. Come aboard. You look, you don't look too enthusiastic. Don't worry. Captain Bob will help you out. You know, on my men in travels, I learned the ancient art of hypnosis. All right, come aboard. See, hypnosis can help you with a lot of things like excessive and compulsive behavior. Once, I'll tell you a little story. Once I had a matey on board who couldn't stop picking his nose. I hypnotized him into thinking he was a chicken. I got him to stop picking his nose, but he wouldn't stop laying eggs. Uh, I can tell by your look that you don't believe me. All right, maybe you need a little demonstration of hypnosis. Watch this, Alan. Uh, hypnotize me, parrot. Watch this. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. You're asleep. <laughs> All right, you gonna let me hypnotize you or you wanna end up like the parrot? You gonna, you gonna let me hypnotize you then, right? All right, good. Here we go now. You're getting sleepy. You're getting sleepy. You're getting wet. Nickelodeon Wienerville will be right back after these messages. Wiener. You're watching Nick, Wiener. and now back to Nickelodeon Wienerville. Easy, easy. Professor, Marcus, shh, quiet. Oh, okay. I need quiet. Easy, easy now. Oh, yeah. Delightful, delightful, delightful. What are you making? Lunch! Now what can I help you with? <laughs> Professor, I have a problem. Oh my goodness, that does sound serious! <laughs> no, no, I haven't told you the problem yet. I suggest a beaker of sodium bicuspid to mix liberally with a jigger of, oh, let's say... Well, it's not me who has the problem. Dottie has the problem. She can't get enough of this local coal. She's going nuts all over it. Oh, is that all? Well, it so happens I have an experiment that might help you. I call it the overindulgent super supplanticator. Also known as... The junk food jammer! Mm, how does it work? On one side of the table, I have placed a pile of tantalizing, yet unhealthy junk food. Hooked to this is a black box, which will send a painful, yet mild jolt to whoever tries to eat it. On the other side... Ah! Yes, yes. 
And on the other side is a harmless, healthy bowl of fruit, pleasant to the touch and palate. Ah! See, Marcus, this will teach the subject that junk food is bad and health food is good. Marcus, have you listened to a single word I've said? Yes, I have, Professor. Dad, you see how that works? Oh, I get it. Alvin, will you answer the door? Simon, the door, Theodore, the door. <laughs> yeah, the door, Simon. Never the... mind, coming, coming. <laughs> My dear Mr. Savoy. <laughs> dear Mr. Calvin. Alvin. And Theophilus. Theodore. And little, a little. Yes, ma'am. And where, oh, where is that dear man? on behalf of a most worthy cause, which I am sure you will want to support. I represent the ladies of the square. That's the Society for Quality and Universal Appreciation of Refined Enterprises, namely, music. Of course, Mrs. Frumpington. And you are the head of the squares, I take it? That's right, Kelvin. We are waging war on the kind of faulty role that one is subjected to on every radio and television station all day long. You know the miserable stuff I mean. Listen. Disgusting. Revolting. And television's even worse. Hear such trash! Just listen to those misguided creatures, and that's what we are forced to put up with! I can see you are an intelligent, brilliant, forward-thinking woman, Mrs. Frumpington. And what I would suggest that all of you squares do Alvin. is to get together and... Alvin! Oh, I do love children. They're so young! Now, Mrs. Savoy. Seville. We ladies of the square have secured 2,500 signatures to further the noble cause. You see? All these names are pledged to outlaw forever the atrocious sounds we just heard and to bring Bach back alive. Can we count on you? Well, then. Thank you, and goodbye, you dear cooperative man. And goodbye, you dear little...
Yes, Mrs. Frumpington? Did I hear that detestable barbaric beat? I beg your pardon, Mrs. Frumpington? I beg your pardon, Mr. Savoy. Listen. Oh, that, that, that's just a leaky faucet. Oh, well, thank heavens. Goodbye again. She's gotta be stopped, I'll say. I'll say. I better pay her a visit. Come here, fellas. Oh, Donna Mobla, Carpuma Voto. Calvin, oh, for me, oh, nice. I see you like nature, Mrs. Frumpington. I adore it. Nature is so natural. Have you ever noticed how nature and music go hand in hand? Of course I have, dear boy. Like the sound of the wind rustling through the branches. Listen to the music of the bullfrog calling his mate. Oh, I could just hug nature. And the birds adding rhythm to the symphony of nature. Nature, one big harmonious family. Do you like families? I love families. Don't you just love a baby, a baby, a baby? Babies? Baby, baby, baby! Okay, the name of the game is... Do the Can-Can. <laughs> we'll be using the cream risers today. Awesome sound effect. All right, now, cans will be coming out on the conveyor belt. You have to recycle the cans. Whoever recycles the most cans wins the game. You just push it over to your opponent's side. You have 30 seconds. Go!
You can't see. All right, there you go. Let's see who our winner is. The winner is with 11 points, Misty. Our runner up receives the silver hot dog. Whoa. You're losing your head over here. There you go. And our winner gets the golden hot dog. And they both get the special topping. Oh! Well, have you talked to her yet? How do you mean? Well, sometimes people don't realize they have a problem until you talk to them. What do you say we go talk to her together? Okay. Oh, Dottie. Dottie. <laughs> Ye Hi, Mark. Have you seen Zip? He went out minutes ago, and I haven't seen him since. Uh, no, uh, but Dottie, don't you think you're going a little crazy there with all that local cola? What do you mean? Well, w look around you, and what do you see? A desk? Dottie? Oh, you're right, Mark! I see can after can of empty local colas! Oh, Mark, I have a problem! I've got nuts all over this cola! Now, don't worry, Dottie. You've admitted you have a problem, and that's a good step. In no time, you'll forget all about the soda. You think so? I know so, because Zip and I are here to help you. Right, Zip? Zip? Hey, this soda's pretty good! Life isn't easy when you're a kid. Midterms, parents, dissolving into a puddle-like substance. Hey, Alex Mack here, and I know just how you feel. Even with my superpowers, being 13 is no picnic. Watch The Secret World of Alex Mack and see what I mean. Today on Nick in the Afternoon. Boss, simmer down. Now stay tuned for Gumby, next on Nick. <laughs> in front of a live studio audience in Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios, Florida. 